What's up you guys? It's your girl Callie Love and as you guys can see my partner in crime is not with me today. She will not be a part of this video but Ani, I miss you and I love you. Um, she just texted me. She about to go lay out at the pool so yeah. Do your thing boo. Anyways so um oh and I have my cup of coffee in my hand. Anybody that knows me knows I drink at least six cups a day. Iced coffee, carrot coffee, like I literally drink coffee right before I go to sleep. It does nothing to me, I'm just addicted. But, okay, so this video is solo because ever since we decided to start a YouTube page, I've been having so many of my Real Chance of Love fans hit me up and they're like, can you please talk about the show? Like, they're so interested in the show. So here it is, story time about Real Chance of Love for all my day one fans. This one's for you. Okay, mind you, we didn't know who we were going for. I remember talking on the phone with a casting director. He loved my personality. Fast forward, I did the on-screen interview. It was supposed to be like five minutes, but it went like over 15 minutes, and he was like, the producers are gonna love you because all my interviews so far, they were not more than like five minutes. So I was like, okay, cool. A week and a half goes by, I don't hear anything. Then I get a call. Chris Catalano, I remember. He was the one who originally found me. He had told me he was like 51 Minds, Chris Abrego, Mark Cronin. Um, they love you. And you know, they they do the, you know, the flavor of love. I love New York. Like anybody that knows those shows, that's like what we are. We're spinoffs of all those shows, Daisy of Love. Okay, so um, uh, Rock of Love, like, okay, you name it. So Real Chance of Love is the first show I was on. So anyways, um, yeah, he told me, he was like, they loved you. You're actually top 10, so you're making it to the house regardless. So we'll let you know when we're going to pick you up and um, just we'll go from there. Oh my God, you guys, when I got casted, when they were like, okay, you got casted, they sent me a contract this, that, okay? The paperwork was this, that. You literally sign your life away. If you die on the show, you're not, like, you cannot sue. You cannot talk about anything on the show. That's why I'm hoping, I think my contract is, like, over now. I'm good. Um, the name they give you on the show, you can't, like, go on another net. Oh, you can't do, you can't be on any other networks for, like, a good, like, three to five years. And if you did anything with that name that they give you, like... The contract was crazy, okay? <laughs> like, we literally signed our soul to 51 Minds. I'm like, okay, I wait another two weeks. I'm filming janky promoters. This week is so busy for me. I have like no sleep. I'm getting home at midnight. I have to be up by like five in the morning to be in like Redondo Beach by like seven. This week was crazy and then I get the call. Okay, we're picking you up on Saturday to start filming. So be ready to be gone over a month pack a whole bunch of clothes including elimination clothes also make sure there's no brand names on it. oh my god i'm like filming janky promoters and i like have no time so i remember just having no sleep that week saturday comes is when they pick me up they pick me up they take me to a hotel so i guess that's where all the girls are and then um i mean there's okay it's 17 girls they pick but there was 20 girls at the hotel from what i know but we're not allowed to look at each other so they kind of like sneak you off and make sure you don't run into the other girls. I remember Mira. Mira is the, was the PA, the production assistant. And she was like, don't worry, you're literally top 10. So you're, you're good regardless. I want to say it was two days. We were in this hotel room. And it's crazy because they film in LA and I live down the street from the hotel. So it wasn't like anything crazy. And I remember in the hallway, you could hear other girls and girls were like sneaking notes to each other. Like, hi, my name is da da da, like whatever. Now these two days that were in this hotel, it was intense. They literally come in your room, they go through all your clothes and they're like, okay, you cannot take this outfit, you cannot take this outfit. If it had like name brand and like some certain 
things that you get away with but they would give you duct tape so you would have to like cover it and then you do another green screen interview they're like sneaking girls we can't have a key to our room that way we can't get out you meet with a a therapist so they they need to make sure that you're there in the head and that you're not gonna go in the house and start murdering people so do you have to meet with psychologists that was the last day that was my two days of the hotel and then filming day begins so they have us all call time was in the lobby this is when you see all the girls okay you're like you know just like sizing them up and i don't know if you guys remember milf i remember we were looking at milf like she's going home the first day like you're just sizing everybody up you know but we're not allowed to talk to anybody because they want us to you know be mic'd and meet each other on camera for the first time so mind you the car ride was like super quiet and i remember i sat next to rabbit rabbit like whispers to me and she's like i like your shoes i'm telling you guys not talk to each other we're just daring each other down so we get there and we find out last minute's real and chant which is fine because I was always a fan of them, so I was really into Chan. That's who I'm going for. And then they start micing you up. It's like a whole mansion. The mansion is decked out to, you know, the theme. But, okay, here's the background of it. Before you go, they take your phones, okay? No phones. And this mansion, this huge mansion that you live in, they only open the kitchen, two living rooms, and a few bedrooms. Cause, you know we have to share and at the end of the day like they have a few cameramen so they don't want to look for us all over the house so everything else was blocked off. The chance in a uh, real their room was upstairs and all the girls were downstairs fast forward you know as you guys saw like we all stood like everything was like hurry up and wait elimination we're like freezing they're getting all the girls lined up and then they have to set up the cameras. It was a lot of hurry up and wait. It's different from reality shows nowadays because you're mic'd 24 seven. The house is mic'd. Their rule was if you go into the bathroom alone, they're not allowed to go in there with you. But if you go in the bathroom with somebody else, the cameramen are allowed to go, out, go in there with you. Batteries on our mic would like go out or the, um, the camera would like, you know, um, their battery would die. So like you could be in the middle of like fighting and arguing, but as soon as your battery dies, they're like, okay, be quiet. You guys cannot talk. And we're like so mad. We want to like go off and they're like, no, you guys cannot talk. And they hurry up and change our battery and then we could continue. We started getting used to it though, but there's like a camera on your face at all times, like at all times. We're not even allowed to take off our mics until we go to sleep. So when we go to sleep, one of the PAs is taking it out for you. And they knew everything, but I'm not gonna lie, we started like learning how to tell each other secrets, like our mic, I would rub on it if I'm trying to like tell the secret. So all they hear is like <sighs> But eventually I got in trouble. I remember they pulled me to the side, they're like, you signed up for this, blah, 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 blah. Oh my God, and PS, I hope I don't get sued for any of this. I mean, it's been a long time and my contract, I'm not allowed to talk about it, but I think I'm good, right? Any of you guys watched I love New York season two. We actually stayed at that same house. Um, they just like redecorated, but yeah, we had stayed at that same house. Okay, we have no phones, no TV, no access to the real world. They have maybe the phones on maybe an hour and a half of the, the day, so all the girls are like trying to use it. But guess what? They listen in all your calls. If your calls are boring or you start talking about the show, they hang up on you. I guess they kind of forced us to interact with each other. This is what a lot of people ask me. Was it real? Was it scripted? It was not scripted. Okay. They did instigate though. As you guys saw, I won all the dates. Like Chance really like fucked with me. Um, and it honestly looked like I was gonna win like spoiler spoiler alert if you guys didn't watch it like i won all the dates no matter anything bad about me he fucked with me he was cool i was not going nowhere but you gotta psych your brain to kind of you gotta psych your brain to really like them and to get them to like you so i think because you're in a house for a month with only these guys and you're trying to compete with all these girls you really do start liking him i did build like a connection with him i'm not gonna lie and what's hard about like dating in the house versus the real world is you have an amazing date one day then the next day another girl has the date 
she comes back talking about oh my god it was so fun we kissed we made out and it's just like you just have to like deal with it and i'm crazy i'm jealous like this is the stuff we just have to in the normal world you know we wouldn't know what they're doing you know they're not gonna tell us but like you know, these girls are coming in, like, rubbing it in your face, you know? I think mentally, everybody was messed up in the head, which makes for perfect TV. So they knew what they were doing. And as far as, we had a bat phone. So if we needed anything, like, if we need more liquor, if we were, like, if we wanted certain things. Like, I remember I was, like, I want to make Chance a, um, like, um, like, a strawberry shortcake one day. So like I called the bat phone and like you put in a request for what you want. Two days later they come back with the groceries that you want. So that's how it was. So like if you need anything, call the bat phone and they got you. So that was cool. So I, I do remember when I finally left the show as hard. It was like, damn, I got to go out and buy everything myself. Like before I had a bat phone, I could just call and be like, yo, you know, I want this. Mind you, there's no music. You can't listen to music on the show. This is where the part where you guys ask if it was like real or not. I would get a date. Okay, I would win a date. I would be freshening up, getting ready. And one of the story producers would come in and be like, so I heard, you know, like, Rabbit was on the phone talking to, like, a guy earlier. Like, it could possibly be her boyfriend. So I think you should tell Chance that on the date. You damn right. We competing, right? So I'm like, okay, that's a good idea. You know, they're getting in your head. You need to do what you got to do. I go on the date. And mind you, every there's producers everywhere. At the end of the day, like you're never alone. There's the cameraman, there's like the um, story person watching you, there's the PAs, there's just never alone. The second you spill the beans, someone at the house, another whoever's watching them and the other camera, they they kind of pull rabbit aside and they're like, just so you know, like Callie sold you out on the date. That's how the drama started. You always find out because of these producers and these behind the scenes people you know as far as like characters of the show you know how when you watch these shows it's always like the bitch the dumb one the sexy one the this and that i feel like it wasn't at the end of the day you guys are watching every 40 you guys are watching one hour of 48 hours okay so every two days is what you guys are seeing because one day is the um the competition and the date and the next day is like whatever and then elimination and you guys are only seeing an hour of a day so like i feel like like kiki for example that was like my bitch also she was so funny but she was also crazy so it's like i feel like they only showed scenes when she's fighting or acting crazy so it's harder i feel like afterwards for people to book i guess that type of character because they already have that in her head like she's just a bitch she's crazy you know what i mean so um so yeah they definitely create a character for you that might not be you if that makes sense because that bitch was funny i loved her and she was dope but she also spoke her mind a lot so that's the only time they aired her me they only showed me when i'm like in my bathing suit or kissing on him and I just literally look like the slut of the little show whatever or when I would like you know he asked me to sleep in his room I'm like okay so like um but I was really funny I like used to play pranks on all the uh, girls I used to set their clocks back and be like oh my god we're late or like I just I played pranks all the time me and Risky Risky was my roommate and like we would rap all the time we free our like it's an inside joke to this day we would like freestyle we would steal all the snacks every time like the groceries came every couple days we would steal it and hide it in our room like but of course they didn't air any of that they only aired you know like her her quiet sweet side that's why everyone loves risky she's a sweetheart don't get me wrong there was nothing bad they could air about her you know um so, and they just made me look like this little, you know, this little thought on the show that was just using my body and my looks. Yes, we do get paid every single day that we're there. So, I guess that's another reason why girls wanted to stay. You know, you didn't want to be eliminated because you want to get paid, right? You know, the longer you stay, the more popular you get, then the more bookings you get. Like, after the show, I think I traveled for like 
there was not one weekend I was in LA like I was gone at least two cities one city a weekend a week like it was back then hosting gigs was like lit so fast forward you know on the show so that's kind of like the inside scoop you guys are getting kind of like the inside scoop of the show you're just literally stuck with 17 crazy girls with no access to the real world so you don't you just go crazy and you have no choice but to interact and then you know a lot of girls really did fall for real and chance so you know it was, it was just hard like girls were really competing with each other girls really couldn't stand each other so um and i mean we got to travel which was fun oh and every sunday you guys didn't know this people don't know this but every sunday by law everyone had to take a day off we couldn't work seven days straight straight so every sunday we would go back to the hotel they would send us back to the hotel same thing once the mic comes off we cannot talk we're not allowed to have a room key we we can't um leave the rooms we're not supposed to like talk to each other but i would like kind of find out like what room like risky was in and i would call her like oh my god so like wow you know so i mean we kind of like figured out our ways like to communicate with each other that was that every sunday we all went back to the hotel and i would call whoever but i would think my phones were tapped like i was scared i really thought my phone was <laughs> was tapped in the hotel room um so i was scared to like say certain things back to filming as you guys saw i won a lot of the dates and i got like the first chain all the time and my best friend on the show was risky and um and rabbit too and we were like the final three girls everyone always asked if that tattoo i got was real that i got i don't know what side it's on but yep i still got it the final two girls we filmed in puerto rico it was me and my best friend i'm not even gonna lie i look so bad i watch like videos i read comments and like back when the show was airing like i totally look like a backstabber but i mean that's what it is like they really get in your head like these producers are like okay so what are you gonna say to chance like you know to make sure you're good i gave them some ideas and they're like why don't you say this you know from what i heard they did the same thing to risky but risky declined risky was like yeah whatever but from what i remember her telling me like at the end of the day she didn't do it like she couldn't go through with it but like my dumb ass did you know so i did i went through with it by like trying to make me look better than her by you know saying stupid shit which i totally regret but it doesn't matter because like after everything we called we squashed it and we're like still amazing friends to this day but yeah as you guys saw the ending he ended up not picking anyone well he let her go and then i really thought i was gonna win everybody thought i was gonna win even people were like i knew callie was gonna win and then he ended up like crying like crazy and he uh said he was in love with me either and then he let me go and i remember real was like yo give my brother a hug and i was like no i'm not i was pissed everyone saw i was crying on tv so embarrassing so i walked away um we were in puerto rico and i just remember that flight oh my god going home was like so sad like i was i was really in my feelings like mind you i'm there for like a little over a month and like really my mental was like invested in this guy the second they gave me my phone back i turned it on he was like yo callie <laughs> and at that time they gave us nicknames on the show there's only one person that's gonna call me callie i knew it was him he was like it was me kamal and i'm sorry yeah you guys that's my little story um if there's anything else you guys want to know comment below i hope i answered all the questions about you know what went down in the house everything you guys saw was real it was not scripted it was just instigated and a little tweaked oh and every other day we had interviews so whenever you guys would see us talk they um we have to make sure our hair is the same and our outfit is the same and every two days they would pull us aside for interviews that's when you guys kind of see us talking about it and then they go over everything that um you know happened in those two days and you know and we talked about it so yeah it was crazy it was fun filming i would say and 
I don't regret it. I just wish I knew more back then than I don't than I know now of how filming works. You know, that was like my first time, so I didn't really know. And the crazy thing is, when it aired, I only got to watch one episode. They called me right away to do I Love Money. Now that's a crazy story because now we're competing for $250,000. So if you guys want a story time about I Love Money, let me know and that will be the next one. Let me go back. A lot of people always ask me also, do I still talk to them? So Risky and Rabbit, those are two will always be my bitches I still talk to them I still love them every time where I still I still hang out with them you know when we get a chance as far as the other girls so hood Kiki I still we still very much keep in touch on you know on social media um, yeah so I mean at the end of the day that's I did you know make some long time friends and yeah so let me know if you guys want to do if you guys want me to do a story time about i love money because that was crazy so until then like subscribe and turn on your notifications and don't forget to follow my instagram and share this video all right well i miss you ani i love you and everyone have a good day